Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Alex, for this invitation. Um, after Brian's inspiring uh, talk and moving us in the future, I'm sorry to bring you back in uh, what we are doing uh, in this project. So, France Université Numérique is a project that has been launched in 2013, May 2013. Um, the main idea was for the Ministry of Education to set up a digital strategy for higher education. And there, are, there were lots of actions in this digital strategy. Quite a few were focused on uh, promoting innovative uh, teaching uh, and learning method and uh, developing the use of digital technologies in learning and teaching. And among these actions, one action was to uh, set up a French-speaking MOOC platform. So this MOOC platform is called FUN for France Université Numérique, and the platform has been launched in 2013. I will tell you more in a couple of minutes about uh, the initiative and how it works, um, but uh, as you probably know, we started in October with 25 MOOCs from 10 institutions, and then early 2014, we moved to uh, 60 MOOCs for more than 20 institutions. So very rapidly, the ministry realized that um, the, this project that has been born in the ministry could not stay forever, carried on uh, by the ministry. So there was a public consultation in 2014 in such a way to give this project to people who were willing to carry it and make it uh, uh, progress. And so in 2015, we have created an independent organization from the Ministry of Education, which is a public organization. The name of this organization is FUNMOOC, and uh, right now, this organization has 29 members. Most of these members are umbrella universities. So behind these 29 members, there are almost 200 higher education institutions in France, both university and grandes écoles, because for those who know, we have this dual system in France. Um, we also have public and private partners. Uh, I said 15, but we're probably more closer to 20 right now. And we have... A, a network in our universities of 1,000 people we work with regularly. Okay, so as for the platform, so first of all, uh, we choose an open source technology, the only open source technology that was available for a MOOC platform in 2013, and I believe the only open source technology that still exists today for a MOOC platform, which is Open edX. Open edX was released the 1st of June 2013. The 20th of June, the ministry said, okay, let's do it. And we launched the platform in October 2013. Of course, we had issues of data privacy. Uh, Brian has been talking about it, you know, in France, but I believe in most European countries, there is a, lots of issues about making sure that the data are uh, kept private, both the personal data of the student, but also their learning data, because we know that on the MOOC platform what, has pro what is produced is learning data that have a great value, of course, uh, at least for research. Um, well, it could have great values for commercial activities. So we have a very clear, from the beginning, we have a very clear uh, set up on FUN saying that the data are really kept private. There is no use whatsoever outside of the pedagogical use of both the learning data and the personal data of the learners. However, as I said, there, is a big, there are big issues as in doing research on those data. So we also said and wrote to the National Commission that is in charge of data privacy in France that we will anonymize the data to provide those data to the research lab so they could work with them. So, uh, and of course, the, the platform is hosted in France uh, also for all these um, privacy issues. We have a very um, clear uh, editorial policy on the platform. From the very beginning, the ministry said, I put money to create the platform any French university or grande école who wants to put uh, a course on the platform can do it uh, uh, without any, you know, some sort of checking whether they are, I mean, they are, they, how should I say that? Um, well, it was, an, uh, it was an initiative from the ministry and all the French universities were welcome on the platform. Let's say it like that. Uh, however, we, we do have... Uh, 
uh, a quality charter. So each university, its professor who puts a MOOC on the platform, know that they have to follow rules. Uh, n not everything can be called a MOOC. You have to have a couple of things in the MOOC. You have to engage yourself in creating and animating the course. So there, there is a, a quality charter that makes sure that we share ideas about what should be on the platform. And of course, we have an editorial policy, an editorial committee, sorry, uh, for, um, to welcome partners that um, want to join the platform. And um, because they had quite a few discussions yesterday, in 2013, and it's still true today, all the MOOC on the fund platform are free for and open to anyone around the world. Um, and of course, we have developed around this initiative a community of practice. I told you about these 1,000 people we work with. So we collaborate with all, all of them. We have seminars, we have training sessions, we share documents, we share best practices, experience. We do uh, a participatory event to, 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 to give visibility to this initiative. So this is basically um, what, what it comes to in terms of uh, the choices that we made in 2013 and that still remain today. Uh, I give you a couple of uh, data. Right now we have more than 260 courses on the platform. These courses have been run um, all, all together uh, more than uh, 450 times. Uh, and they come right now for more than 90 institutions, some of them being international institutions. Uh, we have Belgium universities on the platform. We have uh, um, uh, Tunisian University on the platform. Uh, there is a Canadian University uh, that joined the platform a couple of months ago. Uh, all those courses have had uh, 2,500,000 uh, enrollments since the beginning, and this represents uh, 900,000 learners coming from more than uh, 120 countries. What's interesting is that we look at the map, and on the map we can see that um, we, we, we reach people not only in France, we reach people in Francophone countries. And there is something which is very important for French universities, is the fact that we have 17% uh, of our learners coming from Africa. And if you zoom on the map, and I put the data below, uh, then you can see, of course, that the, the people coming from Africa mainly come from Francophone countries. Uh, and of course, there is an issue there. Um, so, this was briefly to tell you about um, what is, what, how the, 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 the initiative started. What I would like to show you now is that now, because of the fun initiative at the beginning, universities are moving beyond just doing MOOCs, and we try to foster these developments of, of new activities for, from our uh, organizations. So, a few developments. The first one, you know, a MOOC is just a course. Uh, so what we, can, what, we, what we are seeing right now on the platform is that courses are get, getting organized in collections. What is a collection? It's a set of MOOCs that covers a subject with different MOOCs, so to have a complete. Um, so um, I, the first one that I mentioned, um, we launched it uh, this January. Uh, as you know, well, probably it's the same in some uh, Euro European countries. Um, the transition from high school to university is really a difficult issue for many students. And in France, we, since university is open to everyone without selection, uh, there are um, some, so, some fields that have lots of lots of people coming, lots of students, uh, and the, 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 there are difficulties for most of the students. And, and the fail rate is quite high. And one of the reasons is that some students, they go to, uh, to, to domain that they don't really know about. And there are domains that they mostly don't know about because they haven't covered the material in high school. That's the case about uh, medicine, that's the case about of law, that's the case about of uh, psychology. So we launched a couple of MOOCs created by different universities uh, um, that really focus on helping the student to understand what it is to be a, a law, uh, whatever uh, uh, type of law you choose. If, wh what is it to, to go learn and what are the, the curricula and what are the, um, the jobs that you can have. So we do really hope and that those MOOCs will help 
not only the students from high school, but maybe their parents or their professors to help them to navigate better in this huge mess of leaving high school and going to uh, university. And then we have a, a collection on teaching with digital technologies that uh, is uh, very used in, um, in, on campus, especially in the schools that prepare future teachers. Uh, the last one is on digital competencies, uh, and we have a, a series of four MOOCs that covers all the basic digital competencies, the way that they've been defined uh, in the, the European framework. The second uh, development that we see on the platform is the idea of series. So a series is, you know, uh, some sort, a couple of MOOCs where the first one is a prerequisite for the second one and the second one uh, pro prerequisite for the third one. So we have one on C programming. We have a couple of other in, in IT and, uh, and science. Um, I want to point out the one on um, digital design. Um, so it's a series of three MOOC, and it's very interesting because uh, we know that quite a few Fab Lab in France or in some other places in the world organize live session in their Fab Lab for the students who follow the MOOCs to be there, to work together, to talk about the MOOC, and because they are in the Fab Lab, then maybe to practice on the 3D printer right after taking the MOOC. Um, the last one, business processes, um, is also a very interesting uh, uh, example because the university who created this, uh, this series, it's a university in Lyon, they decided to uh, create a new um, curricula, a new diploma, a new degree in their university. The idea uh, is whoever has followed the two MOOCs and succeeded in the two MOOCs will be able to register in Lyon University in this curricula in this degree, they will do a project to show that whatever they have learned on the MOOC, they have practiced in their company, in their, the place where they work, how did they learn how to manage their uh, processes in their company, how do they manage to uh, have them better uh, organized so everything is more efficient in the company, and when they have finished this project, if they do succeed, they will get this degree from Lyon. Uh, okay, just, uh, just a few words about certificates. Um, we know that there is a big issue around this. Of course, on the FUN platform, as on many platforms, we do give honor code certificate for whoever succeeds on a MOOC. Uh, we still do give honor code certificate. These honor code certificates are still free. Uh, but there is a challenge uh, to have some sort of recognition that you work on a MOOC which is closer to an academic recognition. Because when you have a no, a no code certificate, then there is no proof that you are whoever you pretend to be. There is no proof that you, you took the final exam in an academic way without cheating, without using resources that were not supposed to be allowed. So basically the honor code certificate is what it says, something that you, may, you deserve uh, and you may be proud of, but that doesn't really have any academic value, especially for a student who would like to uh, move abroad or uh, uh, use this material uh, in, you know, um, uh, going in a new uh, curricula. So we launched a couple of months ago, well, last year now, a verified certificate. Um, and uh, we did that using a proctoring solution. Um, so the student uh, takes the exam online on his computer, uh, but he is proctored by a human being somewhere that makes sure that uh, he presents his ID, that he doesn't cheat during the exam. Uh, if there is any cheating uh, um, uh, suspicion, then there is a report, and at the end, uh, the team will uh, deliver or not, the same way we would do it on campus, the certificate. And, uh, some universities uh, are, uh, w one of them at least, has already entered very clearly in the, the, the ICTS credential for, for the MOOCs that they deliver. Some of them are thinking about it as well. Okay. So, um, about two minutes? Okay. Um, okay, so, um, 
As you can see, um, beyond MOOCs, universities are uh, reusing their MOOCs on campus using Flip Classroom. Um, of course, some of these MOOCs are uh, adapted to, to, to better suit the needs. Um, and so what we launched a couple of months ago was a dedicated platform for these specific courses, which we call SPOC, by the way, because they are not open anymore, uh, because only the students will register to those MOOCs. So we launched uh, a platform that we call Fun Campus to all those MOOCs. And then we did the same for lifelong learning, continuous education, because, of course, we have a lot of MOOCs on the platform that are uh, very professionally oriented. And so um, they are reused by companies. They are, uh, and so we launched a similar platform which we call Fun Corporate. Okay, so we said two minutes. So you understand that Fun is first a provider, then some sort of uh, animator of the community around the initiative, and then our last uh, mission is really to facilitate partnership. So we have quite a few partnerships. We have partnership with international organization, um, IUF, we, we work with them, we host the MOOCs that they provide, uh, um, that they help uh, thousand francophone countries to build, they are on the platform. There is a NIFADEM project which is about, um, um, it's about uh, teaching um, teachers in, uh, in elementary school how to use digital technologies in their, uh, in their courses. And so uh, for the moment, we host on Fun Campus a couple of MOOCs to train um, teachers in Senegal. And then we have a partnership with Skyron, which you probably know of, it's an NGO that helps uh, refugees uh, in Europe. We have partnership with public institutions, for example, this uh, national organization called uh, CNFPT, which deals with lifelong, lifelong education of civil servants. They created quite a few MOOCs that they put on the platform on different topics that are of interest of uh, public servants in France. Uh, we even have a MOOC uh, uh, from uh, the European Commission, the Committee of the Regions, and uh, we have a partnership with the National Agency for uh, Environment and Energy. Um, this is a very interesting partnership because they wanted to create a s lots of MOOCs to help sustainable uh, building construction to take place in France. And so uh, they want us um, to, uh, to set up a white label platform which is called MOOC Bâtiment Durable, which means uh, sustainable uh, building construction, um, where uh, we, we, we launch the platform, but now it's their own platform and they have their own editorial policy on it. And the idea is to help this whole, all the people who work in this field, uh, and there are so, uh, hundreds of thousands of people who work in this uh, construction field fence, to understand what are the big issues about uh, sustainable construction. Um, we have partnership with socioeconomic sectors. We have a very strong partnership with the food pro process pro processing uh, community in France. We help them to create a MOOC uh, to, to train their HR people. Uh, we have another partnership similar to this one uh, with the metallurgy sector where we created, um, we, when I say we, I didn't do anything right. The universities belonging to our uh, consortium created the MOOC. And then we helped them, we helped this metallurgy sector using a call for tender to identify the best universities that were willing to create the courses. Uh, we have a very interesting project with Startup, uh, where, um, uh, which is founded by a, a, a research agency in France. The objectives here are to uh, really enrich the user experience on the fun platform and to improve accessibility. So the name of the project is EFELA, we don't care. Uh, my last slide, Please. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go in detail, but we also have uh, international partnership. I already talked about the two points in my presentation in the parallel session yesterday. So my very last, um, my very last words are about the partnership that we started six months ago, um, I mean officially because we signed it six months ago, but obviously we started a year and a half ago with Morocco. Uh, the Moroccan universities, they are facing, of course, uh, 
issues of growing number of students, not enough space, not enough uh, teachers, and um, they are really willing to develop uh, blended learning and to make sure that the user, uh, the, the learners have a, a better education. So we launched for them a white label MOOC platform for all the Moroccan university to create their own MOOC, basically for their student. Uh, so it's not officially released yet because the MOOC are still under construction. You have here the picture of a couple of them. There are more than 25 MOOCs that are currently under construction and the platform should be out for all uh, Moroccan students to use in a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you.